Hey, what is going on, guys? My name is Bobby, aka Pabloon, and today I am back with the uh, playing my favorite ships. Today we're going to be playing the Austin, the Goliath, the Jinan, the Petro, and Colbert. So a full cruiser day today. But these are some of my most played ship also, or at least on stream. I love Austin to death. This is just such a fun ship to play. And the amount of damage you can output with Halsey is one of the reasons I love it so much. Next up is Goliath. I've always played Goliath ever since I got it, even before the buff, but people just never really enjoyed it. I've always found it to be quite fun, and the way I play it is a super tank after it got its heals, with IFHE as my main focus, or HE. We're gonna go to Petro, because again, same story with like Goliath. Everybody did, nobody liked Petro, but I thought it was actually kind of cool. And Petro is near and dear to my heart, because it kind of kickstarted my channel. I did a video on this ship that a lot of people really enjoyed, and Probably is the reason why I grew so fast, or as fast as I did. So I owe a lot of my initial success on YouTube to this ship, and that's why it's near and dear to my heart. I actually love Petro quite a bit. Jinan, very easy ship for me to play because you can just sit in stealth and launch torpedoes, and it's got quite a nice suite of skills. And finally Colbert, because Colbert is just such a fun ship to play. I also did a video about Colbert early days, which was Daka Dudes, also got quite popular. And uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do today. So let's start right off with the Austin. And as always, guys, I'll show the um, the build and such in the gameplay so you, we don't have to waste time here. So I'll see you guys at the first game. Okay, so we got pretty lucky here with the triple DD game. And I, I have two black shimikazes on my side, which, you know, having two black shimikazes and they don't have any, mostly torpedo DDs is going to make it super one-sided, if you ask me. I mean, black shimikaze players should know that their guns are quite, quite meaty and can actually destroy many DDs. So hopefully they do that. Yeah, good old Austin. When this thing came out, I was like, you need to, I need to put Halsey on this. And then we figured out all together in this community that if you put Halsey on this and get a Kraken skill, you can get the fastest reload in the whole game. And it has not, I don't think anything can beat the Austin reload. Maybe set of six. I had a set of six game with a Kraken skill, but that was not nearly close enough to what Austin can dish out. I think one of the reasons why I also just love Austin is the fact that it's super stealthy and you play, the, play this like an ambush predator. I think that's what I called it in my Cruises Blitz episode, an ambush predator. And that's also why I'm going far right here. I don't want to um, be straight in the middle here. I was actually hoping to maybe meet a destroyer isolated at this, these types of you know, close ranges here. But they decided to go that way, so I guess I see an, another option now. Which is to flank behind them, guys. We, we could actually do that. I think that's what I will do. And send some torps this way, so Luca, if he decides to come this way, he will meet a face full of torpedoes or a face full of sap. Oh man, this... <laughs> hey, Luca, my friend. This is why you always need to send somebody out on this flank, because this Worcester is also coming with me. We have three people pushing right now. Oh, wait, this gearing. Oh, there he is. Alright, gearing. <laughs> I think he's very dead. <laughs> oh man, that's why you don't leave this flank on on undetected or unguarded, man. You need to, you need people here, bro. Oh, I have a feeling this game is gonna be super fast, done or sorry, done very fast. So maybe I will do I will go for another game. I want the games in this series to be kind of interesting. So. You know, if I if I get like 20k damage and just one gearing killed, we'll we'll play another game, and I'll, that's what I love. Them. But maybe if there's funny moments like that gearing, we can uh, we can put the the clip in there because it was kind of hilarious to be, to be fair. Now I don't have anything against this sow actually shooting at me because I do want my Halsey skill to activate. There we go. That's a fire. He's gonna damage control. Hopefully. Yep. There it is. Now I just stop, and there is his torpedoes that I was definitely aware of. Always be aware of a Sao's torpedoes. If he is broadside to you, that's like almost guaranteed he's going to shoot torps. But now we're going to kill him, so it's all good. He's not getting fires. Okay, there we go. 
There we are. Boom, 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 boom. He's probably dead. Very close to it, at least. Oh, here comes this other set. Let's see if we can kill him before that. Yeah, thank God. Okay. We have a Worcester. No, Santander. Okay. Well, that was probably the easiest Austin game of my life. I'm not going to lie. Like, what the hell? <laughs> we just sailed down an open flank and nobody shot at us. I love it. We said peekaboo to a gearing and then he died. We got a shimmer coming this way. I'll meet him uh, face on. Oh, you're dead, Shimmer. You made a huge mistake. Don't fucking run away from me! <laughs> oh, wait, he might actually dodge that. Okay. Fair enough, Shimmer. Um, oh. Oh, there we go. We won the game. <laughs> um, well, that's Austin for you guys. I actually think I might just use this game because it's a perfect, perfect execution of what I said. It's an ambush predator. You, you stay stealthy. You take out easy targets with, like, DDs. And you win the game. Okay, so good old Goliath. Good, yeah, good old Goliath. I mean, this thing has not always been the good old. It used to have a really bad reputation because it, it just it didn't really sit well with people. It's a mostly HE ship, or at least that's how Wargaming intended you to play it. And it, it just was a little bit underpowered. But what I never understood was people just didn't really give it a chance. I mean, it, it's got smoke, it's got sonar and a defensive fire. It was only really when people saw that it got a buff to its heels, you know, that that the community kind of saw that it can actually work. And a lot of people that probably wouldn't want to play Goliath, they don't play with HE, which is not a bad idea at all. I mean, the AP on this thing slaps. It's the same caliber as... Um, oh, sorry, it's it's 234 millimeters, which, I mean, that's a pretty huge caliber, man. It's close to 250 mil, which is the same Napoli has. The reason I use HE is because of the commander build you just saw. I'm running Jellico on this, which means I have IFHE. And I am, like I said, I like HE. I know it's not the best thing in the world, and everybody who is a super unicum is going to say that, oh, you're, you're, you should be using AP all the time. Sure, but the cool thing about this game is that you don't have to do what everybody says. You can play this just how you want to, and if you like using HE, yeah, you might actually just enjoy Goliath. You get a 14 second reload time, or sorry, 14% 14, um, 14 uh, fire chance, sorry I can't speak right now. And you get a, you know, pretty decent suite of guns, that was a shitty salvo. Wow. The good thing about these HE shells on Goliath is they actually destroy DDs if you hit them, right? Um, I didn't obviously, missed every, sh every shell, but this one might hit. As you can see, they do... Very decent damage. And I will intend to keep hitting this guy if I can. He left Adriatico, so I'll just start farming the FDG here. And it looks like we're not winning the game. See, instant triple fire? <laughs> not bad, man. That is not bad. He will probably have that stuff damage controlled as soon as I see him here. Thunderer. Adriatico that is on a damage control. Here we go. That's the FDG. Can we get fires on him? Nice. Double fire. That's just what I needed, really. Let's go for Adriatico. There we go. Oh, we hit two only. I was hoping to hit a little bit more on my friend. Choose a heal and see if we can take him out here. Come on, come on, come on. Reload, 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 reload. Shoot! I don't want to die to that. There we go. Oh, we hit torpedoes on Junan. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and we did take two right there. That's okay, though. That's okay. I will, I'll be fine. We have our super heal. It's not a St. Vincent heal, like a real super heal, but it, it does do more than normal heals do. I think I will actually smoke up here, to be fair. And then just kind of shoot at this Junan a little bit while he's running away. Oh, I would really like to not get flooded here. Wow! <laughs> well, that was an easy kill. Oh, please hit those torps. Oh, there we go. I think that's a perma blood. No, he did damage control that. Okay, then. But you can see how much damage you're able to farm with this ship if you actually do focus your, on your fires. Now, obviously, with RNG shells, like 
HE. One could argue AP is also very RNG heavy. But with those types of shells, you need to obviously recognize, okay, I'm not getting fire. So if you shot at the target with like seven HE salvos and you didn't get a fire, well, maybe after the third or fourth one, you should consider just swapping outright to uh, AP and just get that consistent alpha damage. That is really important. Here we go. Here is the Thunderer, Deb Tony. I wouldn't mind if we could reach 100k on Deb, to Deb Tony here. He actually does have quite a few heals. He's got four heals just like us, so we can probably farm a ton of damage. Because we got one salvo without any fires on it, and he is going to die soon or later because he's the last guy. So, oh, the DD's behind him. Okay, well, he's dead. Deb Tony's very dead then. Bye-bye, Deb Tony. Bye, Tony. Have a good one. Swap to AP, actually. Since he is on a triple whatever. Yeah, now a triple fire. <laughs> I don't think we need to rely on more fire damage, damage to kill this guy. I think he's very dead already. And I think he is about to say goodnight. Yoink. There we go. GG. 95k. I'll take it, man. So, yeah. If, you, if you're thinking Goliath is a bad ship, not really, man. You saw what we did to that Adriatico. You saw what we did to the Jinan, and you see how the HE works when it does when it does set fires. So, let's see how much how much fire damage do we actually have? Twenty thousand fire damage, guys. That's not too bad. That's half a wither. We we got seven fires there. Here we are playing some good old Petro Pavlovsk. Oh, oops, sorry, it's on the enemy team. Definitely a dangerous player. Especially since he's playing in comp, that's that's not something you want to get hit with. Damn, yeah, I mean, incomparable can absolutely destroy you in this game, especially in Petro. But they did recently buff Petro or correct Petro. It's you know they changed the hit registration or the hit box of the ship to make it smaller. Which I mean, if you look at Petro, it's very very tiny. Uh, small silhouette. Really, the only thing that's part of the silhouette is the superstructure. The ship is so low to the water, which, I mean, it's, it's you know, that's an advantage. You should be harder to hit and, you know, get good shots on. On PC, Petro's Citadel is pretty much hidden. You can't, you can't hit it. But yeah, we don't have that type of mechanic in this game. So, yeah, you're not completely invincible on this ship. But one of the good things about it is, like I said, the small silhouette. And uh, we got this very, very nice... 360 turret configuration so you can pretty much just sit bow in and turn your guns around to each side as fast as you want you don't have to go the full 360 degrees to swing your guns around which i love it's one of my favorite attributes about the petro it's, i mean you also get precise aim rapid reload all good stuff and it all just helps you out in a really nice way but the the only time that petro is really very viable is when you use the legendary mod, and that kind of revived it. Oh my god, who, who, who did this? Look at all these torpedoes, how many torps do they have on that team? Like, that's actually kind of impressive. Oh, well, here we go, he's, yeah. As I knew this guy was going to go for me, but... A little bit hard with Encomp is, I can't actually see him, he's got better concealment than I do, so... Now that we know where he is, I'm gonna, gonna relax a little bit and just kind of peel off here. Don't want to be focused by that guy. Not the best damage. Let's see if we can hit his front. Front bow section. Yeah, he's taking damage now. In comp, you don't want to be in the middle like that. Even though you see a YouTuber and you're like, oh, I gotta kill the YouTuber! It's not a good idea, man. It, it just isn't, because in, in comp does not have armor. And what are those two DDs doing up there? <laughs> that must be the DDs that sent all the torpedoes. What the fuck are they doing? I mean, I'll, I won't complain. It's not my team doing this, so um, sure, sure, do what you want, enemies. Do whatever you want. <laughs> so right now we're very. This is actually poor positioning by me. I'm full broadside to an incomp, so I want to kind of get turned around. It's just I want it to be facing the enemy instead of having my rear towards them, because we we have two turrets in the front, so that's those are the ones I want to use most. Yeah, this uh, GK is not having the best day. There is still one destroyer somewhere. I think that's the gearing. 
But we have a DD who's going for their, <laughs> their cruiser, I see. Alright, here we go. We need to turn in now because Incomp is back and he's probably going to shoot at us. I think I might be able to take out this uh, GK here. Or the Schlieffen might. We'll help each other out. Well, he didn't actually shoot at him. Well, well now I have to finish him off. Oh, here we go. There's another salvo from Incomp. Not, not fun. Oh, I think we got super lucky again. That he's not had any crazy, crazy dispersion. And actually hit us straight in the... Uh... Yeah, so in my recording, um, my microphone is like having a spasm right now and it's pretty loud and obnoxious and not very comforting for the for the years so uh, yeah you're gonna get some voice over here um i think i was talking about the dispersion but generally this clip right here the the incomp was just doing the right thing by shooting me but because of this new hit detection or the the correction of petro's hitbox it actually was pretty difficult for him to hit me if you notice i mean every shell he does hit is a bounce but anyways we're, we're gonna go back now hold our fire on that Worcester and try to go for the gearing here instead i'm just gonna back up and turn in towards these two dds all right one more shot at the Worcester then and we will yeah bow in like this this is what you do guys against dds just bow in you have your guns on both sides remember that you don't need to sacrifice anything pretty much Boom, good hits. We don't have a lot of damage, but we are holding the fort down pretty well, I would say. Boom, wow, bad bad shot, bad shot for me. We should just go for the Holland, because Hollands get full pen by pretty much everything. So, wait, we actually might just still lose. We haven't won yet, obviously. We're actually taking out our team. Come on, hit that Holland. No, dude, that's very bad. I don't know where the gearing went, but he's still here somewhere. Or did he die? No, he's still alive, I think. Yeah, there he is. Oh. You're in trouble, gearing. Why are you turning towards me? Very bad plan, dude. Boom. That's another DD. Alright, we'll, pu we'll push now. First, we'll kill the incomparable, I think. Turn back in, because he's going to nuke us here in a second if we don't... There we go, he's dead. Beautiful. Sad to see we have an FDR on our team, man. And the fact that the Easter event is actually bringing more FDRs to the game, just really, really sad overall, but... Yeah, Wargaming know people want it because CV players, they, they like easy ships, you know. And FDR is probably the easiest CV to play in this game, so... You know, to make Wargaming need to make their money, and they're gonna do that with CVs, because there's a scary amount of CV players in this game. Alright, GG. I'll take four kills and not that much damage. Again, this is textbook Petro. Bow in, tank. Don't be afraid to go for, you know, big targets like an Incom or a GK. You have consistent alpha damage with this AP. Now, obviously, my build, I am using the, the goaded Stepan Makarov, who has APCS. But you really don't need Stepan Makarov for this ship to work. I think the, the most important thing about Petro, at least in my opinion, is the Legendary mod, which you can get for free. And if you're not going to get that, playing with Precision mod, oh, sorry, Reload, Acceleration, and Concealment is the build I would recommend for anybody who doesn't have Petro, oh, sorry, Stepan Makarov or the Legendary mod. Hey, we got an MVP again. I'll take it, man. 70k, not the highest, but we again, we did fight DDs quite a bit. There we go! First game in the Jinan without an FDR in the game. Anyways, what are we up against here? We got St. Vincent, Stalingrad, Montana, Buffalo, Sejong, and some Shimakasi. Let's do this. We're probably going to find a Shim out here on this flank. Um, that's no problem, really. We can deal with the Shima pretty easily. What do we have with us? We have a guy who is not going to push this way. Cool. I mean, it's a Hindenburg. Good idea to stay back. I'm going to go with my Delny here to help him out, because he can disperse of a DD very quickly. With me with me behind him, we should do it even faster. Going to let the Delny go ahead here. Let him uh, 
push up. Okay, we're spotted by a DD, it seems. It's right there. Well, Maria, don't think you're going to be having fun. We are going to be running this Maria down as fast as we can. <laughs> Just look at her run. No! Why? Why the Delny and the Jinan on my flank? What is going on? And Okay, we also get the Shimmer, the Black Shimmer. Okay. Two of them, guys. I'm just going to stay way far in here. Don't want to risk it for the biscuit. Come on. Okay, he missed one. Wow. Why did you shoot the torpedo that way, Shimmer? Maybe he was hoping that I was turning or something? Oh, here we go. Here's the other Shimmer torps. We have to get super lucky here, though, because there's a St. Vincent who is uh, about to hand me a new one, I think. We're going to turn around and run away because, yeah, St. Vincent's about to shoot at us. Oh, no, 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 no. We, we got super lucky there, I think. Could have been way worse. Could have been way, way worse. I think we're about to have to go undetected here in a minute because we also have a Stalingrad shooting at us. Come on, hit some shells. Hit some shells on that black shimmer, please. Hey, nice. I think we might actually get him here if Delny doesn't. I. There we go. Beautiful. Good job, Bounty Hunter. Now we have a St. Vincent and a Stalingrad. They're, they're somehow missing every shell, but... That's great. Okay, we're gonna go reconceal and come back to flake these guys. Because uh, my Delny is in a very good position. I want to help him out. If we can, at least. And now we are, I mean, we're rid of one Shimakaze. We know that there's another one somewhere, but we don't know exactly where he went. Three seconds. Uh, let's just shoot some torps, I guess. <laughs> he's about to have a bad day, this, this, this St. Vincent, I swear. He's about to have a very bad day. Here we go, smoke up, and then we're gonna start aiming, shooting at him, because we are detected now. Oh wait, he actually might outrun some of these. Oh yeah, he will. Okay, good job by the St. Vincent. His speed boost actually saved him a little bit there. But I will definitely shoot some more at him. The reason I'm shooting him short is because I have a feeling he's gonna turn. If not, we're gonna miss, and we're gonna have to rely on our fires to deal damage to this guy. Oh, we're not gonna miss. He stopped. He's dead. Well, well fought, bounty hunter. You, uh, you got, you went pretty deep there. Your Ramashka got him. Okay, that's Stalingrad. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bow in this guy and hope that he misses, which he did just there, and just kind of farm him to death with our main guns, because they are actually quite decent. Smoke up here. Make it a little bit harder to hit me. Oh, we, he, he actually finally hit us. But I'm going to kill him with guns. That's the best way to deal with him. No reason to waste more torps on him. Just want to save them for the Montana who we're going to fight here in a minute. Nice. The other Stalingrad got him. And there we have the Shimmer. Hello. Well, we can't shoot at the Shimmer, unfortunately. So I'm going to have to go in balls to the walls on this Montana here. Balls to the walls. Here we go. He barely survived. Oh my god. <laughs> please kill him. Please kill him. Please kill him. I have to, I have to take him out here. We cannot eat another salvo from this guy. We die. Alright, that should be a dead shimmer. Should be a dead. Oh my god, am I gonna. Please! Please! Give me the lightning strike! I've never had a lightning strike! Give me the lightning strike, please! No! You, no! So close! So close, bro! What the hell is that? I almost got a lightning strike! No way! Oh my god, that was so close! <laughs> oh my no! No! I could have had a lightning strike, bro! I could have had a lightning strike, but we didn't. No! Oh my god, that was so epic, but we should be failed. <laughs> no. You only have 5 seconds after the double strike to get the lightning strike. You have 10 seconds after the first kill 
to get a second one and then get the double strike. But you only have five seconds after you get the double to get the last one. So we ran out of time there, but... Wow. Oh, my heart is beating like crazy right now. <laughs> I'm glad I waited for to avoid these FDR games because, you know, with CV games, it just... They, they do take quite a bit of the damage, especially from battleships, but here we had a full health Montana to deal with, and he actually didn't die from one salvo of Torps, I'm, I'm surprised. I thought for sure he was going to die to the first one. But yeah, that was pretty cool, what a cleanup. What a cleanup. And what a great what a great game indeed, 151k damage, I'll, I'll take it man, any day of the week. And there we go, GG. I'm glad, I'm glad I waited and sifted through those CV games to end up with this, very glad. How much damage did we do with Torps compared to guns? Just to kind of emphasize that your guns are super important in this ship. Because I, I, we probably did more with torpedoes because we hit so many, but yeah, 95 with Torps, 51 with, with the, the guns. And, you know, it's, it's just important to use these guns, guys, because you see, without, without these gun hits, we would have been at 100k. So these G9 players that only use the torpedoes are just missing out on so much more damage. I mean, yeah, 100k is also good, but what about 150? Okay, here we go. Lucky CV game. Gotta love it. And we actually have a Black Colombo on the enemy team. Wow. First time seeing one of those. So uh, we, I, I think we can expect this guy to be shooting at us. Um, I mean, I've tried the Black Colombo on my press account, and that thing is kind of disgusting against stuff like a Colbert or Smolensk. Because if you get that nice salvo with precise aiming too, you're gonna you're gonna absolutely destroy something like this. So let's try to avoid that guy, huh? Maybe? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. We got Hugo Stiglitz, dude. This guy from uh, Inglorious Bastards, man. What a great movie too. What a great movie, indeed. All right, knock him off. Is actually going this way, so I'm immediately gonna turn around. I do, I just don't want to be the you know target of his stuff then again we have two battleships that are pushing and the other okay the other battleships on the other side i am gonna immediately go there oh they're pushing too guys oh this could be good this could be really good so cv's going for hugo i don't know why he's continuing to push guys if you're being attacked by cv from the beginning of the game Best thing to do is get close to your teammates, especially in the battleship. You, you don't want to be alone. There's absolutely no reason to be alone. Alright, well, let's start hitting these battleships. CV is completely... Okay, well, our, our CV is pushed up. That's not great. I'm going to try to hit the Sovetsky Soyuz here to see if I can get a fire on him. He got flooded, so... He's going to repair that, looks like. Yep. Let's focus him. Since he doesn't have his damage control, it's an easy target to focus down. I actually see the Colombo now, so I'm going to turn towards him. I don't want to show him a broadside. The black silhouette is out there, so... Well, there we go. That's the triple fire we were waiting for. We didn't get it, though. CV got it. But let's help take out this Sovetsky anyways. Farm all the damage we can on this guy. Alright, now we see the Colombo. He is kind of aiming over here, and he's definitely just damage controlled. We're gonna get behind the island as much as we can. I'm not gonna activate my sonar here, because we see the Grosso Void pushed out, and again, we, <laughs> we get robbed of our fires because of the CV. He is dead now, our CV, so I guess we don't have an aircraft carrier anymore, which is, I mean, that's not good, I would have to say. It's not a good thing. But then he can't steal our damage. I guess that's the positive. All right, we got an Alsace here. I am going to start hammering this guy. Actually, okay, well, the Colombo just fired, so I'm going to focus him. A Grosso is on me. I should probably not be showing so much broadside, but then again, Alsace, chances of him getting a nice salvo on me is kind of low, I have to admit. Yeah, like I said, that was not a good salvo for him. Alright, Alsace time. Maybe we should focus Grosovoy as well. So let's get that AP on. Start. Oh, there's a Napoli coming here as well. That's bad, bro. And we are we just got triple... F what? Triple fire? Are you kidding, dude? You gotta be joking. 
Well, our team is pushing the base, so I just have to run now. I have to run for dear life. There's also a set 46 here. Damn, dude. Damn, damn, damn. I kind of have to go, honestly. Damn, bro. See this set 46? We have to start hammering him. Well, this is what Colbert feels like, man, when you're playing it. It's just a constant run. You're always running. Always running. We have to defend this base with our life, man. Ah, another fire is just not what I need, man. I might die here. Oh, okay. We have to go undetected now. We just have to kind of hope we survive. Have to run away. Fight for dear life. Since we have a heal coming up, I'm actually going to start focusing this Napoli. Oh, dude, this is not fun. <laughs> It's insane. Conqueror's dead. My team is currently fighting the CV. Oh, that's a Napoli salvo. It's not good. I'm gonna have to turn back in. I want to fight this Napoli. I have to fight this Napoli. They actually killed our Kiev, so my team is not able to take that base. That's very, very, very unfortunate, man. Well, I think this is our demise. I don't think we're going to be able to survive this fight here for much longer. But we're going to do our best to help our team win. There we go. That's unfortunate, man. Um, I was really hoping we could win that. We still have a fire on him. It might kill him, honestly. And instead of capping the base, they have decided to chase down the aircraft carrier and die. <laughs> oh my god, Black Gary, what are you doing, man? <laughs> and there we go, we lost the game. So, what can you learn from this? Guys, when you're playing a counter, right, it's more important that you... Instead of chasing the CV, two men, you know, Republic could have just stayed here and shot instead of push out of the cap. But instead, he decided to be a dumb nut and push out of the cap. So now we don't have a capture zone and they have taken our base. I say we did our best in this game, honestly. I'll, I'll take it. 119k is better than nothing. We didn't actually kill Napoli, which is unfortunate. But yeah, good job to our uh, two dish players here. We got Matt, Matt Goo for real. And... Um, Whoever this Black Gary was. Good job, guys. You did well. So, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. That was kind of a meme-worthy ending right there. I mean, it just it, it kind of showcases the the thought process of the, the average World of Warships Blitz, Blitz player. Nonetheless, I thought this was a fun video, some good games. And, um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed once again. The first video in this series did quite well, so I thought this is something people like, and you you guys might want some more long-form content. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you guys in the next episode, or whenever my next video comes out. Alright, my name has been Bubloon, aka Pabloon, and I am signing out. Hey, thank you so much guys, this is me, Bob, and I just wanted to say my deepest gratitude for all the people who have joined Team Bucknutty, and guys and gals that have sent or gifted memberships thank you so much team buck nutty makes it so i can focus more on youtube and it actually helps pay my bills so believe it or not you guys have really changed my life and i just wanted to say the sincerest thank you so here are all the team buck nutty members again thank you for watching the video i'm going to be signing off see you guys